Okay, everybody hear me? Okay. Sorry, we had to segue from Paula there. She's much much uh, smarter than I am. Uh, so, my name is Mark Brown. Welcome to Ignite. You guys enjoy the keynotes this morning? Yeah, lots of good stuff. Uh, I'm Mark Brown. I'm uh, a new addition to the Cosmos DB team. This is the start of my fifth week uh, on that team and uh, was on Azure Networking before that and have been with uh, lots of different teams in Azure going back to 2012. Uh, as luck would have it, uh, I started losing my voice this morning, so if I squeak or make frog-like noises during this presentation, uh, please excuse me uh, in advance. Uh, here to talk about multi-master support uh, for Azure Cosmos DB, so uh, with that, why don't we get it started? Uh, if you're not familiar with Azure Cosmos DB, uh, this is Microsoft's globally distributed multi-model database service for building planet-scale applications. Uh, we support multiple models, including uh, excuse me, key value, uh, column, uh, document, and graph database models, and provide wire protocol support for the most popular databases out there, including Cassandra, uh, MongoDB, uh, Gremlin, and then, of course, our own native format. Uh, Cosmos DB provides turnkey global distribution for your data. Just simply add a region to your uh, Cosmos DB account, and then we'll replicate all of your data seamlessly uh, anywhere around the world. Uh, this really allows you to elastically scale your storage and your throughput uh, for your applications. You can really dial in storage uh, and then dial in your throughput. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> Cosmos DB provides multiple consistency models, and this allows you to tune the performance and consistency uh, for your applications. Uh, all this comes uh, with single-digit latency uh, and five nines availability anywhere in the world. Uh, and then, of course, this is all backed up by comprehensive SLAs. So that's the intro to Cosmos. Today, I'm going to talk about the new feature for Cosmos DB, uh, and we're announcing the general availability for multi-master support uh, for Azure Cosmos DB. So with multi-master support, functionally, every region now becomes a full master in an active-active model within Cosmos DB. Uh, with this new feature, we're now providing single-digit write latency uh, for reads, well, write latency for reads and writes, uh, and also now providing five nines availability for reads and writes as well, anywhere worldwide. Uh, Microsoft, excuse me, <laughs> Multimaster provides global consistency and integrity uh, with tunable consistency levels, and also provides a flexible programming model uh, for conflict management. Multimaster is available right now in all Azure regions worldwide, uh, and available for all data models uh, and SDKs, and we're the first to offer active-active uh, master support for databases like MongoDB, uh, Graph, and Table. So customers today using Cosmos DB are already enjoying single-digit read latency. With multi-master, customers can now achieve less than 10 millisecond latency uh, for reads and writes at the 99th percentile and as little as 4 to 6 millisecond latency at the 50th percentile. With every region now writable, users can now achieve 5 nines read and write availability for their applications. With Multimaster enabled in your accounts, there's no manual or automatic failover options to configure. Multimaster support essentially provides implicit fault tolerance and enables risk-free failover testing for your applications. Multimaster automatically converges data to all regions, providing global integrity and consistency. And this happens very fast, awfully within 20 milliseconds worldwide. With multiple levels to choose from, Cosmos DB's consistency levels composes really well with the, com with the models we already provide on here. And you get a, customers get an intuitive model for data consistency with clear trade-offs for availability, latency, and throughput. And this is flexible too. You can actually override and relax the consistency level on a per request basis within your applications. <coughs> Sorry, told you I was gonna squeak. <laughs> so to get started with multi-master support, just simply go into the portal and create a new Cosmos DB account. Just enter in your subscription, your resource group, a new account name, select the API you wanna use, and then type the location or the region within there and then select Multimaster down here at the bottom and then click Create and then we'll provision you a new account. So after a few minutes when your account is provisioned, you can then add regions to it. 
with Multimaster, now every region is write and read enabled within here uh, by default. With every region now capable of being a full master, it really makes no sense to configure failover anymore. So if a region can, uh, experiences an outage, failover is essentially every other region you have configured within your account. Writing apps using Multimaster is actually super easy. The only thing you need to do is within your connection policy, just add use multiple write locations and then set that to true. Now, of course, within your applications, if you want to provide uh, the closest region for your application, you want to use the preferred locations collection here and then add the regions you want your application to write to in the preferred order. So if a request or a region becomes unresponsive, Cosmos DB or your application will automatically start writing to the different regions, so no downtime for your applications. Excuse me. So Cosmos DB replicates your data around the world in milliseconds. So conflicts are actually pretty rare. However, in any active-active database, it's actually possible. With Multimaster, providing an intuitive, pr flexible programming model for conflict management. So typically, this type of thing is something you just leave to the developers to have to go figure out. But for us, we made this really easy and provide three conflict resolution models, including last writer wins, uh, user-defined procedure, and then also an async or manual. Uh, mode in there. So let me talk about each of those. With last writer wins, this is the default mode within there. So when you provision a new collection in Multimaster, this is going to be the, model, the mode you'll see first. In this mode, conflicts are resolved based on a numeric value passed in uh, on a property on the document. So for insert and update conflicts, the item with the largest value is going to become the winner. So in this example here, Satya is going to beat out Scott for the right conflict on there. And then for deletes, essentially the delete always wins. So you can't bring a record back from the dead. So if you have a delete conflict or an update on a delete conflict, uh, the delete's always going to win, no matter what the value is uh, in the document. The next mode is user-defined procedure, or UDP. Essentially what this is, is a stored procedure you register with the collection, just like you would any stored procedure. However, there's a difference here in that this stored procedure has a very specific signature that you have to implement for this to work. With UDP, uh, you have full access to the Cosmos DB partition, so you can use any data within it to help resolve uh, the conflict. And here you can see, you just get the collection context right there, and then you can use that anywhere within the script to be able to resolve the conflict. After the script runs, we'll then delete the conflict for you, uh, so you don't have to manage that or deal with it. Um, and if this thing, and if your script happens to throw an error at runtime or some kind of exception, what we'll do is we'll write that conflict into a read-only conflicts feed, and then you can process that and handle that manually um, at a later time. So speaking of manual, the last mode we have is asynchronous or manual. And essentially, you just set this the same way as you would stored procedure, but in that box there, you just leave stored procedure blank. So the way this works is, for any conflict that happens, we don't do anything with it. We just write all the conflicts out to this conflicts feed, and then you can go in and essentially write an application or some, find, excuse me, find some other way to resolve the conflict within there. Uh, the nice thing about this is just its flexibility, because if you're writing an application or handling in your application, uh, you can refer to any service, any database, any source whatsoever to help resolve the conflict within there. So this really provides a lot of flexibility to users. So, whoops. With that, let's do a demo. Whoops, let's go back to here first. Whoops, oh, that's lovely. Let's get this back. So what I've got here is two Cosmos DB databases. Uh, no, I don't want that. They're absolutely identical. So each of them has a, a region in Southeast Asia where I created the account, and then read regions in West US 2 and North Europe. And then I've also got a, <laughs> no thanks, a multi-master account set up here that's identically configured, except you'll see here I've got write enabled on all three regions. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to test the latency on this with a little application I created that just pounds lots of records. So what I've got here is a little application. It's going to do some read and write latency testing within here. So this is a document client pointing to my single master database. So its write is in Southeast Asia. And I've got three locations added in in priority order. So this system right here is running in West US 2. So all the reads, I'm going to configure this thing to read out of West US 2. And if that happens to fail over, it would go to other regions. But all the writes are going to go to Southeast Asia. So now let's test for 100 reads out of West US 2. And this should be pretty fast. Less than 10 milliseconds mostly, so within SLA. <coughs> now let's try writing 100 records with this same database to West US 2. And here what you're seeing is latency is much, much bigger because it's got to write all the way over to Southeast Asia and then come back again. So for a lot of applications, for gaming or IoT or other types of real-time scenarios, this wouldn't be acceptable. You'd want to create a separate database and then have your application hosted there right to that one. And then you'd have to deal with any kind of merging of that data. So now let's show how it works with Multimaster. So now I've got a client and he's connected to my Multimaster database. Same setup, so pointing at West US 2 with Southeast Asia and Northern Europe. And let's test 100 reads against that database. And as you would expect, it's going to be fast, right? Now let's test 100 reads, or excuse me, 100 writes against that same database. And I'll watch fast. There it goes. <laughs> and then you've got super, super fast, low latency within there. And then, of course, all my data. All written in here. So here's my records and all 100 of them right there. So, is that good? You like it? You can clap for that. All right? Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> all right. So next thing I want to show you is conflict management. So I've got two other collections set up here. This one is set up to be last writer wins. So I've got this selected here. This is the default. And then I've created a property here called user defined ID. And I'm going to insert records in this thing three at a time in three different regions and try and induce a conflict. Now, this is actually really kind of hard to do. So I've got multi-threaded, basically jamming in three inserts in three different regions and then trying to generate conflicts on the back end. So I've got to get two or more commits to happen simultaneously to try and generate this insert. So what should happen here is when I'm generating this insert, it's going to look at the value for user defined ID in all three of the inserts I'm going to do. And then the one with the highest value is going to win. And it should show up here. So let's give this a try. So I'm creating a document client for Multimaster. Same region set up in here. And then I'm going to have three different clients doing writes simultaneously to all three of these regions at the same exact time. And then try to generate a conflict. So here we go. Okay, so I've got a new record here, ID of 820, and then the user defined ID that I'm going to resolve the conflict on. So I've got 3, 2, and 0, and that's for West US 2, Southeast Asia, and Northern Europe. So let's go and see what happens. So here's my record. Now, which one do you think should show up, right? Should be this one, number 3 from West US 2, should be the one that's in there. And there we go. So number three for West US 2. So there, Cosmos DB automatically managed the, the insert conflict. And then the one with the highest value uh, was the winner. Is that cool? You can clap for that too. Automatic conflict management. Yay. OK. Last demo. So in this one, I've got this one set to use custom async. So. Select the merge procedure custom in here, and then don't put any value in the store procedure. So what'll happen here is I'm gonna do three inserts again in three different regions, try and generate a conflict, and then we're gonna write them to the conflicts feed within there, and then I can handle them manually from there. So let's try that. Nope. 
Okay. So I inserted a new document, 296, and then I'm doing an update. So instead of an insert this time, I'm going to try and update that document from three different regions simultaneously and see if I can generate a conflict between it. So let's see what happens. Here, let me close this. So there's my document. 820 and a US, US West 2 and now I'm going to go down to my conflicts feed <coughs> hmm I maybe did not generate a conflict so this is a problem it's hard to actually do this so let's try it again so insert a new document 318 and then do an update simultaneously from three different regions and let's see It's really hard generating conflicts. Actually, I don't know what even happened with that one. All right, let's give it one more try. Okay, one more time. Getting them to show up, so thank you. So demo demo gremlins. Okay. Well, I wanted to show you something where you could resolve it inside there, but it's not going to work for me. So let's go back. Let's go back to this. So this feature, I think, is pretty amazing. Uh, Cosmos DB is making it easier than ever for customers to build global services and applications and do it at cloud scale. Uh, if you're new to uh, Cosmos DB, I want to make sure you guys know all the free ways you can actually get at it. Uh, the first thing you can do is sign up for a new Azure trial account and then provision a Cosmos DB uh, account from there. Uh, we also have a second option specifically for Cosmos DB. So if you go to AKAMS uh, slash try Cosmos DB, uh, you can actually go and create a new account in there as well, and that's good for 30 days, and you can party on with it as much as you want. And then, of course, the third option is we have an emulator. So this is a fully functional emulator, works with all the models, all the SDKs, uh, and you can install that either locally on your machine, or you can put that into a container and then host that and then hammer on the container uh, with the uh, emulator inside of it. So lots of options uh, for getting started and writing applications in Cosmos DB. So just in summary, I just want to let you know, every region now writable, full active active support for Cosmos DB, less than 10 millisecond write latency now for all of your requests, 99.999% availability uh, around the world, uh, flexible consistency levels, really great flexible conflict resolution, and then of course available in all regions for all models and all SDKs. Uh, here's some links here if you want to take a picture and get started. And that's it. I want to thank you very much for joining me today and enjoy the rest of Ignite. Thank you. Thank you.